Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I want to make a quick video and show you how to remove the turbocharger of a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Um, this is an F-150 and it's a, this particular vehicle is a 2015. However, these procedures will work 2013 through 17. And if you have an 11 and a 12, um, it's gonna be fairly, fairly similar, not the exact same. So you can still take some things uh, off this video to help you out. I will include, include all the torque specifications that you'll need to install a brand new turbocharger or reinstall your used one. Um, but let's go ahead and start with the first procedure. First thing I like to do is disconnect the battery, negative side. The last thing that we want is for somebody to accidentally start the engine. Now the first thing I like to do is just disconnect the ground side battery cable um, or terminal right here. The last thing that we want is for somebody to start the engine. Um, we're going to have the exhaust off, we're going to have the oil lines exposed, so that will leave a pretty big mess. We don't want something accidentally happening. So after we do that, let's go ahead, jack your fr uh, front end up, um, remove the wheel. Always remember to use a properly rated jack and jack stand. And now we're going to get to removing the inner fender. Um, pretty simple to do that. There's a couple of bolts. I believe this is a five and a half uh, or a five millimeter bolt. There's a couple of them. There's one here. There's one there. There's one down here. And then there's a number of these little pop rivets. Looks like this one's been removed before. You can kind of see what those look like. Once you do that, you can simply take your fingers and slide it out. Um, and slide it down and your fender should come out no problem also one little tip i have uh, for removing the plastic trim or plastic rivets uh, is to get yourself a trim or a rivet removal um, this makes removing these very 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 easy and you actually don't end up breaking them as you can see it stays intact you can reuse these most of the time if not you can go down to your local ford dealer or napa o'reilly's they should have plenty of these in stock all right, so as you can see, um, now that we got the fender removed, we have a lot better access to the turbocharger. Now, first thing I like to do is go ahead and wash everything down with just a little bit of penetrating oil. This vehicle doesn't have a lot of rust, but if yours does, you're gonna be fighting yourself getting these hardware, uh, hardware off. You're gonna make the job a lot harder. So go ahead, soak down everything with some penetrating oil. And the first step I like to do is drain the coolant. Uh, this is a coolant line that runs to the top of the turbocharger, and there's one clip that holds it in. Go ahead and take a pick and remove that clip. Once you have your uh, coolant drained out, you can either drain it out from uh, your petcock on your radiator if you have one. Newer F-150s don't, so you're probably gonna have to open up your bottom radiator hose um, to get the coolant out. Once you remove this line right here, you're going to see a lot of coolant run down if you don't. So that's generally the first step that I like to do. Now the second part that we got to remove is the manifold uh, for the water coolant and oil line, the oil drain line, which is right here. There's two bolts that hold it in uh, right below the turbocharger. And unfortunately on the passenger side, the starter is in the way. So we're going to have to go underneath and remove our starter to do that. Go ahead, get your 13 millimeter or half inch socket, break loose and remove the top bolt. And then the bottom bolt, um, the transmission cooling lines attached to it via a bracket, get a 10 millimeter, remove that bolt and a 13 millimeter to remove, actually it's a nut, 10 millimeter nut and then a 13 millimeter bolt and the socket, the um, starter should drop down free, giving us more access to the back bolt to uh, remove these lines. So with the starter removed, um, we are underneath the vehicle here and we have better access to these two bolts. One's right here and one's right right here. Once we have that, um, we can go ahead and take this fitting and kind of pull it away a little bit. Not too much, it does bend a little bit, but you don't want to be too crazy with it. Um, so we're going to remove those two bolts and then we're going to work on the, you can see right there, there's the oil feed line for the turbocharger. All right, so we got the two bolts out of the bottom fitting right here. Next thing you're gonna wanna work on is this feed line. There is a clip, one single clip, that holds this line, and this line is kind of stationary. So once you have it removed, and we go up top or through the wheel well to remove our turbocharger, you're gonna remove it directly this way, and you're gonna wanna pull out of, uh, have the turbocharger pull out of this line right here, um, because this line is kind of bolted down to the motor down back here. So 
um, just keep note we're not going to be removing this right now when we go to pull off our turbocharger we'll go ahead and slide it out of that line so the next step is going to be to remove the two 15 millimeter nuts that hold on the down pipe um, they're not on pretty tight I've always had good luck getting these bad boys off so you shouldn't be fighting them too hard uh, I always find it's best to remove them when you're underneath the vehicle versus through the wheel well all right so I've got the nuts removed Go ahead and take this little collar and slide it down. That's going to make removing the turbocharger a lot easier because it won't be in the way. All right, so next step is going to be to remove the vacuum hose off of the wastegate. It's not on there real hard, uh, so just go ahead and pull it up and tuck it out of the way. Next thing I like to do, instead of removing our whole entire charge air cooler right here, what I like to do is take off both hose clamps that hold it on, hold on this coupler and you could just loosen the one with the turbocharger and you're gonna have to kind of wiggle the pipe, get this out of the way, wiggle the pipe and take off this coupler. That way when we remove the turbocharger, uh, the, the charge air cooler, uh, hose air cooler will stay right here, but this coupler will be out of our way. Okay, so we go ahead, we have our uh, coupler off. Next step is gonna be to remove our inlet air, which is this tube right here. It connects us to this little mounting bracket right here, but first, Go ahead, take yourself a millimeter and tighten this up real good. You can spray some WD-40 on it, uh, help you out. And then let's go top side and remove the top of the pipe. So this pipe comes up top here and connects to our air box with this hose clamp. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Once that's loosened up, you can simply just take it up pull up on it and it'll come right out you can just hang it right there all right so with our air cleaner pipe out of the way kind of got it tucked up here you can see the turbocharger can come off a lot more easier last thing to do is to take off these three bolts that hold on the turbocharger using a t47 torx bit uh, with an impact as you can see they come off relatively easy. Never really had these bolts give me any problems. And last one. Alright, and after we take that off, the turbocharger should be free to come off. It's just being held up by that oil line and uh, a little bit by the exhaust here. Now if you have two people, um, you could have somebody kind of hold back from underneath the vehicle, hold back the downpipe while you remove it. Um, if you don't have two people, unfortunately like me, uh, you can use a pry bar against the bell housing of the transmission. If you see, you can get the exhaust back just enough to take it out. If you can't, which I doubt you can, can't, then um, you can remove these two studs and that'll give, uh, give way to this lasso flange that is holding on uh, the exhaust. All right, so with the turbocharger out and out of the way, um, what I like to do is just take a clear piece of tape and throw it over these two lines right here, just so nothing goes down in them. These are actually your oil lines. I misspoke earlier and called them water lines. Your water line is right here and up on top right there. Um, you might experience a little bit of trouble removing the turbocharger, just back it out and wiggle it a little bit back and forth and it'll pop. All right, so I got the turbocharger in the vise and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place the gasket that's in between the, the actual turbocharger uh, turbine housing and the little adapter right here. It's a multi-metal, multi-layer gasket. Um, not always necessary to replace it, but since the turbocharger's off the vehicle and out, let's go ahead and do it anyways. The vehicle has 100,000 miles on it. So um, what I like to do is double nut the studs. We're going to have to remove both studs in order to get to that gasket. Uh, double nut the studs. These studs are in there really tight, so you might have to take a torch to this section, which, as you can see, I did. It's smoking a little bit. Um, and then you can crack it free and remove it. All right, we got the first one. Now it's on to the second. There we go.
All right, so we got our new gasket on. We got the studs tightened down. That's good to go. Next thing before we throw this thing back on the truck, we're going to service the two uh, quick disconnect uh, fittings. There's one right here, and then we're going to turn the turbocharger 90 degrees, and there's one on the other side there. They house an O-ring for the metal pipes uh, that uh, um, coolant goes through, and so uh, we're just going to go ahead and replace them with new ones from Ford. Then we're going to get this bad boy back on the truck. There we are. So there's one O-ring right there. And then inside there, there's an O-ring as well. All right, so I got qu both quick disconnect fittings back on. Um, one little quick tip I have to help install the uh, new lines. Take a little bit of wheel bearing grease and go ahead and throw it in that fitting. That's just gonna help the line, the line uh, slide in there and not be so hard when you're installing this this back line right here is a little bit difficult to get into so that grease is going to kind of help it slide in there. one thing that also might help you out is getting underneath the truck and you can actually take your hand and move this rear line right here into the turbocharger and once that's done um, you don't want to bolt it up quite yet because you got to get this other gasket in here um, the gasket for the oil uh, the oil lines what you, could, what you can do is kind of manipulate the turbocharger push it up and pull down on these lines at the same time and kind of sandwich that gasket in there. After that's done, go ahead, feel free to put your two bolts in and torque those down. Alright, once you got your oil and coolant lines back on, go ahead and throw on your starter uh, via the two bolts and put the collar of your exhaust back onto the turbocharger. Don't tighten these down yet, we're going to go top side and bolt the turbocharger onto the manifold that's more of a priority we don't want the exhaust influencing how the turbocharger sits and possibly not torquing to the manifold properly all right so we went ahead and mounted up our turbocharger uh, via the three bolts the torque spec on those bolts is 28 foot pounds went ahead and swung over the coolant line and make sure it completely um, snaps into our new fitting if you're reusing these fittings install those clips before you put the line in it's going to make um, putting the line and getting the seal correct a whole lot easier if these clips are already in. Um, next thing, pretty much reverse procedure, go ahead throw on our hose to our wastegate and then I'm going to hook up the hoses and torque down the hose clamps um, for the suction and pressure side of the turbocharger. Alright so now that we got the turbocharger back on, um, it's a good idea to go ahead and put coolant back in the vehicle to the proper level and change the oil. Definitely check for leaks uh, when you start it up. I like to keep the fender off, that way I can see and monitor these lines, uh, our oil lines which are down here, and of course check for exhaust leaks as well. Alright guys, seems like uh, everything's good. Just got done with the test drive. No more leaks, um, no coolant leaks, no oil leaks or anything like that. So. Looks like the repair is done. I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave something in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you guys quickly. So um, thanks for watching and take care.